Life's too short to drive boring cars. So we all work very, very, very hard for our money and we just hope that whatever vehicle we end up buying is safe, performs well and we'll get decent value from it. We also don't want to have reliability issues or we don't have vehicles that have unexpected breakdowns. But how about vehicles that ignite, they go poof up in smoke or they burn before our very eyes. Some vehicles actually can burn while they're hiding in your garage and others might burn while you're driving down the freeway. Well, I'm going to share a list of vehicles that go boom and burn so hopefully I can help each and every one of you avoid these burning sensations. Let's get into it now. Before we get into the list, let's share a few basic statistics. Did you know that about 19 vehicles are burning every single hour in the United States? And most of those causes for fires are variable. Some of them are careless activities by the owner. Some of them are design flaws by the manufacturer. Some of them are just an outright equipment failure. And some of them are just caused by some kind of odd heat source that can ignite some gasoline fumes. Now there's been a lot of press on electric cars burning these days, but still approximately two thirds of the fires are based on internal combustion engines and only about 5% are actually caused by collisions. Now the first one on my list is one that I couldn't resist. It's not an engine per se, it's an electric motor driven by a battery and that's in the Tesla Model S. I couldn't resist because these vehicles have received a lot of press lately. Did you know that in these high output batteries in a Tesla that they're about 11 times more susceptible to flame than a vehicle with an internal combustion engine? Now Tesla claims that there's only five vehicle fires for every billion miles, but I guess time will tell. And there's a recall that's hit the radar lately, but before we talk about an example of that, let's take a quick look around. And right there we have the Tesla Model S, one of their larger grandioso versions. Certainly the premium car within their lineup. Now it's grown a few years, so there's been some time to work out some of the bugs. The newer generation Teslas are showing to be a little more improved. But the fact of the matter is it's still the technology and it needs to be explained. Tesla. Gotta love that logo right there. Elon hit it out of the park with that design. Now I gotta love this overall style. You've got some chrome, got these great little tail lights with this LED strips, multiple little LED pieces within that fixture. We have the 90D which is suggest the power output and there's the Model S. Now Tesla has some awesome wheels every time and they've got these great hips. Now if you look down the line you'll see these bulging hips make the car look very strong and prominent. How about all the chrome around the windows? Definitely gives it that nice accent especially when contrasted with the black car like this. And we have those great little tuck away handles. You'll notice they're very flush on this side, but over here, it's actually slightly recessed. It's pushed in too far. And there we go. We have some great mirrors. I love those on the Tesla. And the great little headlights, arguably some of the cleanest headlights in the business. And I love that front grille. There is none, no honeycomb, but it looks great nonetheless. So it's a very attractive car. Certainly almost looks exotic, borderline. Some of the quality control issues, for example, fit and finish with the door handles not fitting right, some door panels don't align right, as well as the air suspension has been a problem for many, many owners. So it's just a sign of some quality control issues. Even that center screen, which is essentially the central hub of operating this vehicle, has been known to crap out very frequently. Blank out, glitch, or just needs a full out replacement. So it becomes a very expensive car and one that's very glitchy via electronics. But it takes a lot of battery power to turn that electric motor to move such a big vehicle down the road so briskly. And there's a story and what triggered some of this recall unfortunately was an older couple had a Tesla. They actually had two vehicles in their garage. They went to sleep for the night. They plugged in their Tesla Model S to charge for the night. Okay, thinking middle of the morning the vehicle would be charged by the time they get up for work or what have you, they'd be good to go but it didn't happen that way. The way it works out was it started a fire. Fortunately, the couple woke up, ran out of the house, and were able to avoid the fire that was occurring in their garage. Now, unfortunately, not only was the car in question burning, but it was also burning the car next to it, which was also a plug-in electric vehicle. So it's a very, very sad story, but unfortunately, it's that very chemical reaction that generates an extreme amount of heat in the batteries. And if the engineering isn't bang on, you can overcharge it and create that fire. The Tesla Model S. The next vehicle on my list is what's parked behind us here. Now, while it's the, not the latest and the greatest, there are still a lot of these survivors on the road, and it's the BMW 3 Series 
5 Series and Z4 from the 2006 to 2007 generation. What we have here is an E90, E92, or an E60. They're great, they're well made, people enjoy driving them. They're the ultimate driving machine. So even though they leak like a sieve and people are gluttons for punishment, as I am, there's still many, many of these on the road. You have to beware of this major fire potential. But first let's look, give you an idea what we're dealing with here with this generation. I mean, what we're looking at here is the E90 generation, which is the sedan. As you can see, we've got a trunk and we've got four doors. If you had the 92, it would be a two door Coupe, but essentially the same vehicle underneath. This one here is a 328, that means it's an inline six. The newer 328s have the turbo four, but this is the outgoing generation. BMW right there, always have some great rims. We have some great fat little handles, as well as kind of old school. They're using the key to get in there yet. How about those basic little mirrors? And we have an X drive, means it's all wheel drive. Well, a little bit of rust tells you it's got some miles under the hood. And look, your classic angel eye headlights by BMW. How about the infamous kidney grill and the BMW decal? This is true BMW experience. Also got a sunroof. And like most BMWs in the era, they actually had a fairly robust leather interior. And these come with either an automatic or a manual gearbox. You can also get a few different engine styles in these and the 5 Series as well of the same year has the same drivetrains available to it other than they add a V8. But the issue that pops up with these vehicles is the PCV. That's a positive crankcase ventilation valve heater. So when the weather's cold or extreme or inclement, there's a heater that keeps the PCV functioning properly. But recently there's been 185,000 vehicles added to an existing list and now the running tally for vehicles impacted by this PCV problem is about 925,000 vehicles, most of which are probably still putzing around on the road today. Now BMW wasn't totally revealing how many other than they used the comment several field incidents had occurred. So for the short term, BMW before they got to fix that PCV, they were suggesting parking your vehicle out of the garage so you don't have a problem. If that burns, then you don't have a situation where you're burning your garage down. Why? Because unfortunately they could burn whether the vehicle was running down the road or even whether it was parked in the garage quiet an hour later. And this was all caused by a little bit of corrosion that could generate additional heat and ultimately burn the vehicle down. The 2006 and 7 BMW 3, 5 and Z4 cars. And the next vehicle on my list, or shall I say vehicles, is by this brand right here. And that's Hyundai slash Kia. And unfortunately you can't even do a Google search and look for engine fires without seeing this brand here. They're plastered all over the news because of some major recalls. Right here we have the Hyundai Tucson, just as attractive as anything else. Almost looks up to par with the Porsche beside it, but anyhow, there they are. We've got some great headlights, projector style. We've got LEDs. Trademark grill doesn't look particularly cheap. It has a bold front end for sure. And these great laser cut rims. How about the plastic around there? They even thought about that. That's gonna protect the bodywork from rocks coming off the wheels. And of course here we have a great little mirror and it's typical little side marker. And rails here to haul all kinds of junk to the dump. And you've got these cute little handles as well as a very stealthy and slightly sporty back end. Gives you lots of versatility to popping trunks and throwing all your other junk in the back. Now look at that. I love that dual exhaust on the one side. And this is the 1.6 turbo with the all wheel drive system. And there we have, it's the Tucson. Even the side looks very, very contoured and profiled. Quite an attractive vehicle from the sidelines. But it's really not about that. It's really about the fact that they start on fire. And it's not just the Tucson. As I said, it's both Hyundai and Kia. And you can find these issues and they're identified within a, the Kia Soul, Optima, Sportage, Santa Fe, and of course the Tucson as we have right here. Now this unfortunately impacts vehicles from 2010 to 2016. And the volume of vehicles that are actually impacted by this recall is over 2.3 million. And what is that? Why are these vehicles starting on fire? Well, there's a few different reasons. There's actually a couple of recalls. The big one is the rod bearing problem. And so what it is, is at the bottom of the engine, you have the reciprocating mass. So you have the piston, connecting rod, and crankshaft. Between the crankshaft and the rod, you actually have a set of bearings. Well, it's those bearings that are failing. And when those bearings fail, they create a lot of heat. That heat then creates smoke and fire. And there's lots of cases, countless cases in the news and otherwise, where you can find people who have been left stranded on the side of the highway, impacted by these vehicles burning to the ground. 
Sadly, Hyundai and Kia have been a little slow on the uptake to actually make this all right, and there have been a lot of people really put out by these issues. There's been about 3,125 reported fires, 103 people actually injured by these fires, and one unfortunately perished as a result of these vehicles burning to the ground. Now, unfortunately, part of the fix was for Kia and Hyundai to put in a software patch and or equipment to sense for the rod knock before it even became a major problem. But to me, I think that's garbage because all you're doing is putting a band-aid on this whole situation. You're just listening for it. You're not fixing the problem or the root of the problem. You're just sensing the issue before it actually goes boom. And then people are unfortunately still going to be put out by a vehicle that needs a new engine. The Kia and Hyundai vehicles. And the next barn burner is parked behind me and it's a 2013 to 2018 RAV4 by Toyota. Now everybody knows Toyota is king of reliability, but even they slightly miss the boat at times. There's actually 1.9 vehicles now that are under scrutiny and investigation for fires. But let's take a quick look first. There we go, we've got the RAV4, ouch! And we've got a little fancy cover on there. These vehicles are essentially almost bulletproof with the exception of these fire issues that we're talking about here. Of course, they're four-wheel drive. Then they got the little pea shooter exhaust. No power, but they're reliable. And they've got these great little color moldings, as well as these tiny, cute little handles on the back, as well as on the front, and a really basic 80s-style vintage mirror, as well as a roof rack to haul more garbage around. There, there's nothing too much fancy here with these. We've got a standard headlight arrangement, and there's Toyota with the V6. You can get a four-banger as well. This is the engine to have, though. And they have their typical Toyota style wheels, nothing too fancy, but they are alloys. And if you look inside, because this is the limited version, we have leather interior and it's pretty much decked out to the nines. We also have a sunroof on top for all the little rascals inside there. So they have additional lighting for them. But currently the vehicle's actually not under NHTSA advisement. Unfortunately, because of the investigation, they are looking at the fact that there's now 11 of these vehicles that have actually burned. And now that's why they're advising everybody in the model year range to take care, take note, and the investigation's gonna hopefully flush out the issue. But so far what they're saying is there seems to be a commonality between collision damage repair and battery shorting out. Now the battery terminal, they're saying the positive post is too close to chassis and ground and it's shorting out. And when that happens, it ignites a fire. Of course, all kinds of flammable fluids under the hood and everything goes up in flames. That's what they're suggesting at this time. That's preliminary, but this is just an advisement and a caution to anybody who owns a 2013 or 2018 Toyota RAV4. And another one I have to confess isn't actually an internal combustion engine or ICE. It's actually a plug-in vehicle and it's the Chevy Bolt. I'm sure each and every one of you have probably heard of the issues there, but let's take a quick look around first. Personally, I think I like the style of it. It doesn't actually look that bad. For something that's supposed to be frugal and efficient, it actually looks kind of sharp. One highlight for me is the front end. I love the looks of this vehicle. I mean, look at that front end. I love that really low profile LED light. And of course you've got that integrated light within that vent looks sharp and the front end just looks great. What is with that texturing? I really, really like the looks of that. And it's a Chevy, but in black instead of blue. And we circle around, look at this vehicle. We've got great piano glass black, as well as a great little LED strip, soft touch. And I love these wheels. I mean, they are absolutely great. They have these great style. What's with all that little texturing in there? That looks great. Love it. Very cool and intriguing vehicle. You've got lots of plastic cladding to prevent the vehicle from destroying itself with rocks and gravel that you find all over the road. And there we are. It's the Bolt EUV electric utility vehicle. And it looks great. I mean, you've got this nice little finishing down at the very bottom. How about this little black stripe here? It all looks actually relatively well dialed in. Some nice quality components, some nice tail lights, again, LED. The parts on this actually do look somewhat upscale. Sure, it's not a Cadillac, but you're not paying Cadillac money. And it looks great too. You have a nice little leather interior, as well as a touch screen in the center. The vehicle actually looks like an upscale luxury vehicle. I'm liking what I've seen, but unfortunately, it's the battery inside that's been supplied by a Korean manufacturer that has been causing lots of fires. Lots of recognition all over the internet about it. It's a sad state of affairs. They've had to go to another manufacturer. Charging over 90% has been part of the culprit, but it's not too unlike what BMW was dealing with in their hybrid battery selection, where there's contamination within the cells that can create additional heat and therefore fire. So the Chevy Bolt loved the way it looks, waiting for the fix. 
So here's the next potential flame child right here is a vehicle that's very, very new. It's actually one of the latest and greatest models by Volkswagen. And it's actually a small little SUV or medium sized SUV, if you will. And it's called the Taos. What we basically have here is something that's similar to the BMW X3 in size and stature. Every manufacturer is building this size and this grade of SUV. It's quite a neat vehicle. I mean, you've got the LEDs on the front end and of course Volkswagen right there keeps their simpler style. It's not quite Audi, everything is simplified, but it still looks actually very, very sharp. We've got these great little vents. And how about those alloy wheels? Very, very interesting there as well. Looks like they kick off a lot of airflow get a little better fuel economy. And there it is, it's the Taos. Now you got a standard little matte black mirror and a pretty standard looking handle arrangement. And here we go, we can put a couch, drywall, plywood, you name it. We could fit it on top with that fancy little roof rack. And of course, we've got that great little plastic cladding all the way along the bottom, protect it from the stones like a lot of SUVs have today. And there as well, LED tail lights. Gotta love these, very clean, very glossy and very sharp. And here's a trend that seems to be a little bit awkward. It's not an exhaust pipe. There's nothing there but a space. And the same thing over here, another space. But there's no pipe at the very bottom to recognize. So Audi's big on this. They're doing these cheesy little fake exhaust tips. But if you look underneath, you'll probably see an exhaust pipe somewhere. Here we have 4Motion because it's all-wheel drive. And of course, standard hatchback for an SUV. And the interior is definitely consistent with the Volkswagen brand. They've been making these very Spartan basic style interiors for quite some time now. But it is a quaint, cute little vehicle. What's the problem then? 17,000 of these vehicles have been recalled for a potential fire hazard. And I mean, when this happens and it goes off the rails, it's a significant fire hazard. That's right, a real firebox. What it is, is the fuel systems are connected with quick connects. They snap together. Well, what the problem is, they're recognizing that some of them may not be securely fastened so you could spew out fuel. Of course, some of them might be distorted, some of them might just not fit properly or damaged, and that could result in fuel spilling, leakage, fumes escaping under the hood, and of course, ultimately, is flames. They've been recognized by NHTSA, and now there is a recall in place for these. I mean, now think back. BMW, quick snap together coolant fittings. We know how that panned out, right? Coolant everywhere, snapping on the ends, lots of problems down the road. It's perfect when it's new, but when it's five, six, seven years of age, 100,000 kilometers, then you start to see the problems. I hope we don't see the same issues here, but currently there's a recall. These could go up like a tinder box. And with all of that said, hit that video. You're gonna love it. It's gonna share some of the vehicles with the worst transmissions in the world. Hope to see you real soon. Catch you then. Bye-bye.